cows on the farm basically since the very beginning yep and then way before me yes and then it went from Guernsey's 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 to Holsteins. Holsteins and then um you guys decided to there was a a dairy buyout back in the in the 80s because milk was so cheap yeah, what, what you got for it. So they figure it was overproduction. So the government bought out, bought out whole herds, and you couldn't sell the cows. They had to go to market. So they wouldn't let you sell the cows to another producer. Mm-hmm. They were trying to. Cut the government out. was trying to thin out the herd. Yeah. Because of they figured it was overproduction. So you put you put a price in on what you would take. So basically a bid. Yeah. And uh, we got accepted. So I think it was, I think it was 85 we got accepted and we milked till in the spring of 86. And that's when the cows went down the road. Milk 60 cows one morning and I haven't been milked on since. So. Mm. Yeah, that's, it's kind of, kind of sad in a way. It was. Um, very sad when the last cow went on the, but on the truck. Especially when uh, the farm was founded on 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 that livestock. Livestock and and the dairy the dairy industry itself, um, you know, it was uh, it was that's that'd be quite a quite a change to go from what I mean, shoot, you'd be up every morning probably at what time? I got up ten to four every morning. Ten to four. For forty years. So what was your what was your role and what was Earl's role and when you guys were milking and stuff? What would what well, would you I, take care of and what was he taking care of? I mean, you guys probably did your own thing. Yeah, we always we always milked together. Okay. But I usually clean the barn after we got the barn cleaner and stuff. I get that go on and clean the barn and then he'd uh, do the bedding and and then we'd haul in hay and. You know, feed everyone and yeah, and then milk together. I'd feed the cows their their grain feed that we fed them, and, and uh, when he was doing other things, bedding the gutters and stuff. And, okay. And then that big ground roof shed there, we had a feed bin. So we ground feed it went went to town, and that we'd haul a load of oats to town and get it ground and then come back and then we shoveled it in out of the truck into the bin. In the one corner in that round roof shed they had a wooden room almost. Yeah. And then it, it, went, and then it wasn't it, a room but just an opening. Just an opening to keep the grain separate. The feed. The feed. The ground feed. And there was a hole in the in the side of the... On the other side there. Yeah. Where we back to pick up or back the truck up and shovel it in by hand. Mm. And then uh, later in the later days, then to the co-op have a, a feed grinder. They'd come over and grind up feed for yeah, you. They grind it. They had a portable machine. They come and grind it and, and wow. order it in there. They had a, a portable mill that was on a truck, and they they'd back up in there and they you could land the lakes. Land the lakes, lakes would grind up <laughs> your feed for you. The farm transitioned out of cattle and in in the eighties there, and then. Um, you guys uh, just went strictly, well, you still had hay. You still had a lot of hay land. About four or five years, we put up hay and sold it. Yeah. And we had a guy from Clitheroe that would come. And uh, That's in southern Minnesota or what? Central part. Okay. And buy the hay and eat all it down central part of the state and sell it. Okay. So, so you still had a uh, few hundred acres of hay anyway. Yeah, 
Yeah, we put up a lot of hay. And then at, uh, that, that would have been, you know, all the way from 87, 88, 89, 90. Probably about it, about four years. Okay. Then the ground was running out of alfalfa. So right, it was starting to peter out. Yeah. So they did that then, and then um, that was all on the square. So what did you guys run for Baylor's? Didn't, you had a couple John Deere's. At the end, we had a, a, a 136 and a 138. John Deere yeah. with uh, farmhand bale accumulators on the back. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't actually handle too many bales ourselves because we picked the bales. The accumulator put eight bales in the pile. And we, in a pack. Yeah. And we'd pick them up with a loader and put them on the trailer and haul them home and unload them into a shed with the loader. And, Okay. Then when we sold the hay, we loaded the trucks and semis with the loaders. So. Yep, but you still had to do some hand oh, work. Oh, yeah, we did some hand work. Some hand work, putting tie bales in and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, and then even in the hay shed, you'd still have to tie in a few bales here and there. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that was quite interesting. There was, uh, they ran two balers and, and some New Holland hay rakes, and then had a whole bunch of hay racks. And yeah, um, eight, eight trailers, eight trailers, a yeah. couple tandems, or at least one tandem, one anyway. tandem. and uh, would would string them together and pull them with what 1270 case. Some of them, well, then whatever we put them on small tractors individually, you know. Okay, but then uh, in the fall, we'd, we'd bail flax straw too, and okay, all them down. And so, you're doing some flax straw baling too, we bail at night. Okay. Get done twelve one o'clock at night, and then we get all the load of them on the trailers by hand. And at that time, we didn't have the farm hands. Right. And then in the spring, in the, after milking, we. So when was that? That was when you guys still had the cows. Yeah. You guys were doing flax straw. Yeah. So you'd milk cows in the morning. Yeah. And then you'd do your stuff during the day. No. We, or what? We'd get the chores done, and then we'd pull these eight trailers down by rows where they had these great big piles, slack straw piles. Okay. And we'd unload them down there, and then we'd come back, and then we'd come by in, in the afternoon, and then that night we'd go out of, with there's some moisture come down, so the flax straw bales would get heavier. Mm. And we'd bail at night then. Because they were sold by the weight. Yep, by the ton. By the ton. So you'd get a little dew on them and they'd pack a little tighter. Yep. That was kind of the theory behind that. Yep. Okay. Otherwise you couldn't get much weight in the flax straw bales. So. Uh, sure. So you'd bale flax straw till... Midnight or so. So would you drop singles or did someone on a rack or right, what? Riding on the trailer, piling them on the trailer. At night? Yep. Had a light on the back of the trailer on the light on the back of the baler. So I'm sure see. it was a good one. <laughs> so, yeah. You could hardly use it. It was just more like a Campbell. Like a light off a tractor to be yeah. wired up on there. Right. Yeah, so then, jeez. So you'd milk cows in the morning, then pull the hay racks to town, unload them, and thrash flax in the afternoon, do chores again, and go back out and, and be a flax straw till... Midnight or, Midnight or something. Until we got the trailers loaded. Until you got the trailers loaded again, yeah. Well, at least there was a lot of time for sleep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. After milking cows for 40 years and getting up in 10 to 4, I never got out of that habit. I still, still do that. Still get up at <laughs> 4 more. I know that for a fact because if we're doing a late night or doing thrashing or something and come back early in the morning lights will already be on <laughs> in the house when we drive by his house so yep but uh so yeah that that was that so that anyway after the cows went then the, the, there was still hay and stuff like that then you guys kind of started plowing the hay under yep yeah and then uh, put wheat on it and stuff like that and flax to start with oh okay some flax yeah yep, i suppose no they don't raise much flax or no anymore. no not really so where would you sell the flax seed? Local elevator in town here? In Roseau. In Roseau? Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. What, uh, behind uh, alfalfa, you'd get pretty good yield on that, wouldn't you, usually? Oh, yeah. I mean... I don't know how many tons to take or whatever. Or pounds or whatever. It was always good. Yeah. Our county used to have a lot of unique crops. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Flax was always one of them. Timothy. A lot of Timothy was raised. A lot of Timothy. Yeah. Barley. A lot of barley. A lot of barley. Oats. And oats and stuff like that. But I think a lot of the oats and barley now are growing up into Canada. I think that's where a lot of that production went. When we raised Timothy, then we'd bale the straw and an outfit up in Canada would buy the straw to feed the horse, the pregnant horses to make birth control pills. Oh, mares, some mares or something up there, yeah. yeah red horses, they feed, huh. they feed this dry Timothy straw to them. Mm. And, uh, and then they catch all the urine and make it into birth control pills. Yeah, that's a strange deal. <laughs> So you can believe that or not, but it's true. Yeah. And then, uh, so yeah, there was that. And then, so it was barley, oats, Timothy, flax, yeah. and then rye at that time. Yeah. Winter rye time. type thing, yeah. a lot of rye. And then, yeah. but did you guys do ever do much, um, plow down and stuff like that? Like, uh, sweet clover and stuff once, like that? Once in a while to loosen up the soil. Loosen it up. But the alfalfa done pretty good on that too. So. so you guys didn't usually have that skip year, or they call it back in the day. They used to call it summer fall. Yeah. And we what that is is where farms would wouldn't plant a crop that year on that ground, and they'd either summer fall it black, yeah. or they would put a like a cover crop on it. Of there wasn't such a thing as chemicals to spray back then, so you summer followed to kill the weeds. So that was the idea. Yeah. Yeah. It worked too. Yeah. But there wasn't as much weed bank as there is now either, probably. No. Then in the, they'd seed the crops in the spring, and then around fair time, the mustard would be all headed out. And as kids would go out and pick, pick mustard, and they'd give us a penny a piece for them. Okay, so that would have been in what, the end of July? Well, whenever, yeah, the middle of July. Middle, middle of July. Yeah. No. And then, so you guys would go out and pick mustard. For a penny a piece. For a penny of mustard. We'd come out of there with a big armload of mustard. We'd sit down on the end and got them out. And, <laughs> and that was our fair money. Oh, okay. To go to the fair with. Oh, man alive. <laughs> and you'd do that for, for the farm here or the neighbors or what? No, no, just our own. Just the here, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we go out there, us boys would go out there and pick mustard. Well, I don't think this farm really did a lot of it, but uh, the, the grass seed industry in in this county is it was a, a huge was a huge thing, and uh, or still is I guess. Way back in the day when they first started with that, it was called June grass. June grass. Yeah, and they cut that with a they cut that with a mower. Sickle mower, and then they had a, a deal at drive by where each one was shorter, and it would roll and it roll. Oh, really? Yeah. And then they could combine it. So they'd use a, there'd be like little flippers, and it would just kind of roll it into a... No, it just, it just did like a angle iron, not an angle iron, but flat iron. About yeah, that yeah. Long. It would come back, and the first ones were short, and they'd curl up. And then there'd be another one, and it'd be just a little bit longer until you covered the whole seven feet that they cut. Mm. And it would roll it into a roll. I'll be darned. It would be just kind of this, about a length, about like a rope almost, not a very big swan. A wind roar. A little wind roar. Yeah. yeah. And then they combine it. Hmm. And then, and then, and then <coughs> they used to, so that, uh, which a lot of it is still growing up here now, or not as much bluegrass. They call it bluegrass, but... That was for like lawns and golf courses, highways. And highways and stuff like that. Grass seed, and um, so yeah, that that was that was that's that was a big deal, especially the bluegrass. There was heyday for that back in the eighties, was it? It was good money for it, and then. But that was it. when that was when farming wasn't that great at the time either. Mm -hmm. The crop farm. I mean, we're talking wheat, soybeans, corn, and the the, the grass seed. Had some uh, had some value. Oh yeah, they they was uh, we didn't. They were people were raising grass seed before we ever started out. Yeah, but you guys had cattle, so that was yeah. you know you got to remember that the farm transitioned out of livestock in the, in the always, mid eighties. We always raised Timothy. Yeah, had Timothy. So that was a form of grass seed. Yeah, 
yeah. you know, seed and, and we dig it, dig a sample and pick it down and go to Badger and Greenbush and Rozo and then different seed buyers around. Oh, so it'd be kind of like you'd see what they'd give you. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So you'd get a price. It wouldn't be a board price. It wasn't just, well, this is what it's worth today. It was, you'd bring in your sample to different buyers and they'd yeah. give you a, a value of what they would pay you. And they'd shake it all out and if they found what they call cockle. That was a weed for bluegrass or timothy's. Mm. And if they so many cockles, they discount your the price because of the cockle in there. Hmm. Because you couldn't, the cockle was really hard to clean out of Timothy. Hmm. And you, you could go down as far as when you cut it and never see a plant in there at all. And then figure it's clean and you go down. I, I think they had it up their sleeve because they'd shake it out. <laughs> I'm probably <laughs> here, here's one, here, here's Oh, I'm sure there was a few tricks. <laughs> So I'm sure there was a few tricks back then. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So that. So they. Um, you guys did raise some some bluegrass and some grass seed in the '90s, didn't you? Yeah, for a little while. A little while there, but primarily it was wheat and and canola, right? Canola. Yeah. Canola. That was kind of the your guys' main thing on the farm. The canola, and when that first come in, we were one of the first ones to raise it, and when we. Took it to town there. They didn't buy it in Roseville here. And the elevator manager, he said, Boy, I sure hope that stuff never catches on because he didn't want to buy it. So we had had semis come in and hauled it to Hallock. Okay. And then the, the last load that didn't go on Hallock, we had a, here on the semi. We looked, had our own single axle truck and they took that down to a little town right north of Hallock. Okay. They get rid of it. Oh, uh-huh. I'll be darned. And then the next year, then they started buying it in town here. So okay. A lot of people started raising it. So. Yeah. Didn't you say you guys tried soybeans too one year? One year we had soybeans. Before, I don't think anyone had even. That was up on the East Farm. So you guys tucked it up in there so you didn't really, Yeah. It, you know, nobody really knew about it. <laughs> but anyway, you, you tried raising Soybeans yeah. in probably what year would that have been? Oh, I don't know. Ninety something or other. Probably before that even. Oh, really? Yeah, because it, it was not too long after we had the farm up, up Easter. So. Oh, really? Yeah. So what made you guys think about trying to raise soybeans for feed more so than anything? It was a good price on it, but we didn't have a very good crop, and we, I don't know, just. They didn't. Nobody did. Nobody straight, really knew what to do with the. the and crop. nobody did straight combine at the time, so they had to swath it and let it shell some out. And then, by the time we got. So you would sw- you actually swath the soybeans? Oh yeah. And tried picking them up with the pickup header. Oh yeah, you did. I'll be darned, because there was no flex headers up in this and country. Nobody was nobody was straight combining anything back then. That's interesting. Yeah. Huh. Could you guys imagine uh, swathing this? <laughs> Swathing them and then uh, pecking them up. Yeah, that would... We swathed everything. Well, right, yeah. yeah. You'd swath canola, too, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're going to get ate up by bees. Yeah, so there was a story <laughs> one time he was swathing, swathing canola, and uh, there was a beehive in the dam. Well, they'd had... The bee men had put bees there, and about three weeks before we were going to cut it, they come and pick the hives up. Never thought nothing of it. And the... I was cutting the canola and all of a sudden I run into a spot there. Oh, it must have been about that big round and like that deep with bees. Oh and my god. Cut right through it and they was not happy about that. You got stung up pretty bad. And really many, many it must have been a hundred times I got stung. Oof down. Before I got out of there. I got great big welts on my hands or blisters on my ears and my face and Yeah. Yeah, that was not good. Oof, uh, you've had a few close calls. Uh, Grandpa always said you had nine lives. <laughs> yeah. He uh, yeah. One time, uh, another time, too, uh, didn't a bale pile come down on you? We had 13 bales high and it tipped over on me. And them were big bales, not the little cream puffs. The square bales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 80, 90 pound bales. Oof, uh, that and then there was, oh yeah, you were... The swather, the steering motors, something went out on the swather one time. The end on the, the steering rod come off and broke. 
when you were driving the swather down the road wide open or in road gear. Yeah, and we had moving and, from one field to another. And we had great big tires on there because we'd put on duels on it because the fields were muddy. Okay. And we was going down the road. So you're moving faster than normal then even. About eighteen miles an hour or so. Uh, it started, the road grader had gone and there was big piles of sod along the side and stuff and it started getting, working its way over there, started turning the wheel to steer it back and it, there was nothing there and it caught the roll and the end of the, end of the ditch I went right head first and went over the steering wheel and down through the side. Seeing the reel on the sickle. And Man, I kind of remember hearing about that. It popped the header off the swather. It hit the ditch so hard. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, there was no cab on these things, so you went right over, right into the sickle. And still, I was lucky enough that the you know, ditch was deep enough so the wheels were standing there turning wide open, and I was laying down in front of it. <laughs> it, was, it was still running. Oh, wide yeah, open. right. So everything happened so fast. Yeah. And then uh I crawled out of there and shut it off. Yeah. Sore as heck, I'm sure. Well at the time you probably didn't feel feel it until you beat up. Yeah. And Earl come along, he'd been he'd gone down the road and turned around and come back and he was wondering what the heck I was doing. I said, Well, I didn't do this <laughs> purpose. Yeah. What are you doing down in the ditch there? Yeah. Yeah, I drove down here on purpose. Yeah. And I took the tractor over once. Yeah, I was mowing right out here too, wasn't it? And rolling the road ditch. And I was going to turn him up alongside the culvert and the dire mower caught in, the, caught in the dirt and pulled the front wheel into the culvert and over I went right into the culvert. The mower he was pulling hooked the dirt enough to pull his front end over. Yeah, tipped the tractor and the mower and everything right upside down. And then the I couldn't find the switch because it wasn't where it was supposed to be. And the mower was laying upside down running wide open and I crawled off underneath that one too. Jeez. One time I was just a little just a little shaver and Merle was raking hay with the E three co op with the side rake behind Your it. brother. Yeah. And I was sitting on the fender or on the gas tank on the tractor. And he turned around and looked back at the at the side rake and some reason or other I fell off the dog on him right in front of the wheel. He turned around and seen I wasn't there and hit the brakes and pushed me ahead when the wheel skidded. Just about run you over. Yeah. Laying in front of the wheel. So I don't sit on the didn't sit on the gas tank anymore after that. No. <laughs> we talked about tractors a little bit in the last one as far as farm equipment and uh, the farm was a co-op and and uh, cock shot and and uh, I think didn't you run uh, Oliver all some Oliver and uh, there's a story that I want you guys to hear it uh, has to do with the, the local John Deere dealership and uh, so the ground right around our home farm here is 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 pretty heavy it, it's 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 a heavier clay uh, soil and uh, it, it plows pretty hard it's kind of got some blue clay in it and whatever um, but anyway uh, to, to, to plow the, the this ground what were you guys using and pulling? We had a W9 that they'd bought brand new and that Super M and we had a 414 John Deere plow and uh, we had them hooked together to pull it and at that time was when the 80 John Deere's come out and the dealer in town there, he thought we should have one. And he wanted to come out and demonstrate it. And folks told him no. And they said, if, make a deal first. He said, because if it's satisfactory, we'll buy it. If it isn't, we'll. So before they brought, before they wanted to do the demo, they said, no, we'll. We'll, we'll, we'll bring out a five bottom plow. And they said, okay. They said, no, you can pull our four bottom plow. It'll be good enough. It'll be satisfactory. Well, he said, that's not of that then, he said. So, <laughs> that, yeah. 80, that 80 should handle that four bottom, no yeah. problem. But we didn't tell him that we, we were pulling them with two tractors. A WD-9. And WD, just a W-9. Oh, just a W-9. Okay, W-9 gas. And a Super M. And a Super M tied together Yeah. to pull a four bottom plow. <laughs> and he wanted to bring that five bottom on, he told him no. And he, 
he come out with the tractor. He said, well, I should be able to pull it in third gear. Then he said, no, you'll come to her. <laughs> it was a trip plow. I don't know how it Oh, yeah, so just yanked her. He yanked her in about the second ping. The bun, she was dead. <laughs> so I'm pop, pop, done. Yeah, and he put it in second and killed it again. And then he put it in low. And he did pull it in low gear, but the front end was coming off the ground all the time. <laughs> He went back to town with the tractor. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad and, and so Rudy and stuff like that, they actually bought a fair amount of equipment uh, brand new back in the day. They bought everything new pretty much. Bought everything new. But they had a, the, the dairy was humming along pretty nice. Oh, yeah. It was a, like they said, it was one of the largest ones in the county. Yeah. And the, uh, but at the time too, they were paying differently on milk. They were paying on butter, weren't they, or something like that? That's yeah. why the, Guernseys, no, Guernseys, Guernseys, because they had richer milk. Richer milk. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, there wasn't. Uh, then after a while, they started. They switched the volumes, and and it wasn't too worried about the butter fat. So right. Then the whole thing. So you guys got to realize too that the timing of that whole thing was pretty pretty good. They built that new barn. That barn that was a hundred and. What was it, 110 feet long? 160, 36 by 116. 36 by 116 feet long, and it had quite a few, you know, dairy in there. 41 to well, start with. 41 to start with, and uh, and then World War II finished up, you know, yeah. and then everyone come home, and the com- they kind of was of a kind of a commodity boom there for a little while. They bought a, the milk or everything was was they were paying good money for everything. In nineteen forty five, they bought a brand new W W nine international tractor, and they got it on on my birthday, the twentieth of October. That W nine that was that you yeah. just told about that they were plowing with, and he had. Uh, they had 200 acres to plow yet, and they got it all plowed that fall yet. What, but did you say what they plowed into December? Yeah. Yeah, early December when they got finally got done. Hmm. So. So that, and then, and then the all the cock shots were new. They came from the local co-op in town. Those E threes were new. E threes, and then that that five seventy diesel that that was the farmers union was selling gotshot at the time. The farmers union in Rosal there, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We had a five fifty like that too. We traded out the E threes on my five fifty. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> yep. So what was kind of the transition from from these here then when when you and you and grandpa kinda of took over on your own what or what what well, did you guys use for equipment? This 570 was a pretty good sized tractor back in this day. And we traded that off on an $1,800 Oliver. Okay, so you went from a 570 cock shot to an 1800 to an $1, Oliver. Yeah. And then did that stick around very long? or yeah, we traded that in that 970 case. Okay, and then you traded that on for a brand new 970. Yeah. Okay. In, in town here. Yep. Yep. And I remember the 970. That yeah. was around for a long time. Yeah. When you were milking now, or right, when did you guys work at the John Deere dealership there for a little while? You guys kind of had a little off-farm income. We were milking cows at the time. And we would go down and set up machinery. Um, so how did you get roped into that? Just for all and just ask us if we wanted Wanted to well, help out a little bit. Set up some machinery, and then when there wasn't any machinery to set up, then Earl was helping he haul machinery, deliver stuff. And, okay. And I ended up painting, painting, cleaning machinery, and painting machinery, and then I, I paint the whole business, floor, walls, and ceiling before John Deere Day, which was a big deal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. so uh, that's when I got started painting tractors and stuff. So the dealership in town here used to be called Fredrickson's, right? Yeah. And I've been there since many years. Yeah. And then, but that closed up in the nineties. Yeah. When John Deere started consolidating a lot of their their uh, their dealerships. Yeah. Well, they, he just had a little shop in the back, and they couldn't get nothing in there. Yeah. Size tractors to yeah. work on. And yeah, they were starting to sell 9600s at the time and stuff like that, and they were still set up for almost uh, two cylinders. 
yeah. size equipment. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, so that was a multi-generation uh, business too. That was, a, yeah. uh, his dad had started it. And Louis, then, Louis started it and then Roland and took over. Took over. Yeah. And then you guys helped out there a little bit for a few years. Yeah. Yeah. And then on the, the John Deere day, we'd work then and we were in charge of making coffee. We'd, we'd take these 10 gallon dream cans and go over to the Atlanta Lakes place and then we'd make coffee in 10 gallon, 10 gallon cans. It, oh, really? We got the steamer. Oh, yeah. Not the steam. Okay. Yeah. I'll be darned. Get her good and hot and haul her back over to Fredericksons and there would be a lot of people that come for John Deere Day to see a movie and then they'd have a lunch and yeah. they'd bring them in. But yeah, and then you guys ended up buying a, uh, another new tractor um, back in the, uh, be right, the 80s, uh, the 2030? 2030, John, no, that was... That's a 73. Okay, 73. But you bought that brand new. Brand new. Yep. And that one, uh, that was a gas, uh, 2030. The last gas. Or 30, 20. 2030. 2030. Yeah. I get it confused. Yeah. The last John Deere gas tractor that Fredrickson sold. Okay. It was all diesels after that. After that, yeah. Yeah. But then you guys wanted that size tractor for the, for the dairy. Yep. Um, we bought it as a utility tractor because we wanted to, had to get underneath the pipeline going into the barn. Sure. With it, so. And and then and then later on, you guys put a farmhand loader on it, yeah. right? Yeah. Which worked out really nice because that that twenty thirty had a shell shift on it. Yeah. And they still got that twenty thirty today. It's in the shed. I'll show you guys one day, but I still use it. Still, he still uh, moves snow that every every time we get snow. When we bought that, that was the first John Deere tractor they'd had. And we bought a gas because it was going to be in the barn, so we didn't want diesel, diesel smoke. smoke in the barn. Well, this darn thing smoked worse than any diesel. It pinged all the time, and it burnt six gallons of gas, and all were just doing chores. And so there was the, something wrong from the from the get go on this thing. It burned quart oil every eight hours. And we kept complaining to the John Deere dealer, and he said, "Oh, he said, you just you haven't had John Deere before, and you just expect so much more out of it." And he said, "No, if we were satisfied with this tractor, we wouldn't be in here complaining about mm -hmm. it." And finally, he told us that he had a John Deere mechanic coming. To work on another tractor, and he called me up. He said, "When, the, when he come, and could bring it in." So one day he called, and I drove to town. And he was kind of ticked off because Roland hadn't told him about his other tractor coming in for him. So the mechanic that was in town, look at some other stuff. Yeah, was a little kind of like, "Well, what the heck's this now?" Too? Yeah. So everything, everything I told him was wrong with it. He said, "Well, that's, you know." John Deere says, John Deere company says it takes a quart of oil every 10 hours, so that's normal. He said, uh, John Deere company says it takes a gallon of gas for every 10 hours, so 60 horse tractor should burn six gallon an hour. He just on and on. And I told him, I said, we got a, a 12, a 12, 12, uh, David Brown. It's supposed to be the same horse, and I pulled behind that out of that thing. And, and, so we put it on a dyno, and the most it would get out of it was 56 horse. And what was it supposed to have? 60. 60. And they're usually around five, six, seven, eight horse over. Over what they say. Yeah. So then we were standing there talking to him. And but by now you were kind of getting pretty frustrated. And it was sitting there idling on the dyno, and he was just rattling on and on and on. Finally, I went over and I just pulled the throttle down wide open and just got blue in the shed there. And then after that, he talked to me. Then he was, and then he's, he's like, okay, there's something wrong here. He asked the mechanic, he said, uh, Daryl, he said, what do you think of this tractor? And Daryl said, well, for a new tractor, he said, I think it's horse shit. He said. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he said, have you ever checked the oil pressure on it? It's got a light on it. No. Well, he said, you better check the oil pressure on it. So Daryl put a gauge on it, and it just buried the needle on it. So it was putting out a ton of oil pressure. Yeah. 
So he told Darrell he said to, to uh, set the oil pressure down to where it's supposed to be. And then he said, you better pull the head off, but check the valve guides, he said. And they were completely ruined. So they they put in new guides and ground the valves and the tractor hasn't been touched since. Been a good one. They only had 300 hours on it at that time. Mm. So, but it still burnt six gallons of gas an hour, but it, it would go 60 hours in a quart of oil anyway. You know? Right. So, yeah, that, that tractor's done a lot of work around here. I got 6,500 hours on it now. 6,500, yeah. yeah. Good tractor. And you used the heck out of that when you were loading square bales. Oh, yeah. Used it. Haven't, uh, haven't babied it. No, it, it definitely got used. I, I remember Grandpa using it in the woods, some a little, kind of like a bulldozer, a little bit more than it should have been, too. Yeah, it was a little <laughs>